The cumulative frequency diagram shows the times taken by runners to complete a half marathon. So we've got cumulative frequency on the vertical axis and time across the horizontal axis. It says, on the grid, draw a histogram to represent the data. Use this table to help you. So in the table, it's got time minutes. Time is less than 100. So if we come across to this graph, we can see that when time is 100, if I project up, that's 8 on the cumulative frequency axis. So it means for times less than 100, how many people have come through? Well, there's 8. So what I do is in this table here, I say there's 8 people who had a time of less than 100 minutes when they were doing the marathon. The next row says time is less than 120. So coming back to this graph, if I look at 120 minutes on my horizontal axis and project up, I can see that that relates to 56 on the cumulative frequency axis. Now this means that by the time 120 minutes had elapsed, 56 people had completed the marathon. Now that includes these eight because these eight people were also less than 120 minutes. So cumulative frequency is summing the number of people as you go. So we've got eight by the first 100 minutes, 56 by 120, and now you repeat the process for 160, 200, and 300. So let's have a look here. So 160, I project up and across, and I get 100. So 160, by the time we got to 160 minutes, 100 people had come through. By the time we have got to 200 minutes, we can see that 110 people have come through. And then time less than 300. So at time 300, you can see here this relates to 120 people. So this suggests that the slowest person was 300 minutes, and by the time 300 minutes had passed, all 120 people had completed the race. So we've got 120 here. Okay. Now in this table here, it asks you to um, calculate the frequency. Now the frequency is how many people completed the race with the time between zero, uh, between 80 and 100 minutes. Now, between 80 and 100 minutes, if we look at our diagram here, that's this section, no one completed the race less than 80 minutes, and by the time 100 minutes had finished, there were eight people. So eight was the frequency for that group. Now in the next section, we know that there were 56 completed by 120 minutes, um, but this includes this eight people here. So if we limit it to just being between 100 and 120 minutes, it must be 56 minus 8. So 56 minus 8, which would be equal 48. And we follow that same idea across. Between 120 and 160 minutes, uh, there was 100 people that got there before 160 minutes, but 56 people were there before 120. So the difference between 156, 100 minus 56 equals 44. Uh, and then we just keep looking at the difference between these two numbers. So 110 minus 100 is 10. 120 minus 110 is 10. So this is how many people came in for each of these class widths. The class width is how much time there was in each of these gaps, if you like. So from 80 to 100, the class width is 20 minutes. From 100 to 120, again, it's 20 minutes. This 120 to 160 is 40 minutes. And this is 40 minutes. And the last one's quite a large class width. That's 100 meters. So you've got to be careful here because the class widths aren't all the same size. Now, frequency density is something that you need to draw a histogram. And you get your frequency density by doing your frequency divided by your class width. Now, be careful. You don't want to write outside your margin when you do an exam because this won't be included. I'm just doing this for your notes here. So here I'm going to have 8 over 20, uh, which is 4 over 10, which is 0 0.4. Uh, here I've got uh, 48 over 20, which would be 2.4. And just to double check that, I'll get the calculator and show you how I do this. So I do um, 48 divided by 20 equals 2.4. And then I've got 44 divided by 40. 1.1, then we've got 10 divided by 40, equals 0.25, and then we've got 10 divided by 100.1, 0.1. 
Uh, right, so now these decimals, you've got uh, two decimal places for this one and one for the rest. So what I'm going to do, just to make it life easy for me, I'm going to give them all two decimal places so it makes it a bit easier to compare the numbers. I think of that 2.40. If that was 240, that would be 40, that would be 110, that would be 25, and that would be 10. And the reason I've done that is, is we're now going to have to put these uh, numbers on a scale, on an axis, and it'll just be easier to sort of think about it in terms of uh, having them all the same number of decimal places. So to draw my histogram, I'm going to have time on my horizontal axis, and I'm going to have frequency density on my uh, vertical axis. So let's just put here frequency density. Now the frequency density has to be uh, from 0 up to the biggest number, which is 2.4. Okay, uh, so let's count how many boxes we've got here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14. I reckon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If we use 10 boxes and we say the 10th box is 2.50, um, I could then say, well, 2.50 divided by 10 would be 0 0.25. So each small box would be 0 0.25. Um, so then this would be 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1.00. So for, in my mind, I'm thinking of this as 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 1.25, 150, 175, uh, 200, 2.25. Now if I've done that right, 250 should be in the right spot, and it is. So this is not something you need to add to your diagram, but I'm just going to add this in for your benefit. So we're saying that one of these boxes, we're saying the height is 0 0.25. So one of these tiny little boxes here is going to be a tenth of that. So that'd be 0. Point, hang on, how many we got? One, two, three, four, five. I've got five of them. So 0. 0.25 divided by five. Well, 25 divided by five is five. So each tiny box must be 0. 0.05. And a big box, the height would be 0. 0.25. So it's just totally explaining the scale here. Now to do your histogram, you need to plot your class width against your frequency density. Okay. Now the class width goes from 80 to 100, and it's 20 wide. So 80 to 100, uh, so that's 20 wide. And for that class width, our frequency density, will, density was 0 0.4. So if I come up to 0 0.5, and I want to take off two small squares, and that would give me 0 0.4. Now, you should actually be using a rule for this, so let me do that. So the first one I've plotted was 80 to 100, 80 to 100, 0 0.4 is the frequency density. Next thing I'm going to do is 100 to 120, so let's find that first. 100 to 120, that's that section there, and the frequency density is 2.4, so quite high. So if 2.5 is here, and I want to take off down to 2.4, it must be, I'll take off two boxes, the height of two boxes. So let's put one across there. Now remember with the histograms, the area is proportionate to the frequency. Next, we've got 120 to 160, so that is a slightly wider class width, it's twice as wide, and the frequency density for this class width is 1.10. So there's one. Remember, each tiny box is 0 0.05, so if I want 1.10, I need two of these small boxes to add on to 1.0. So that would be here. And remember, this one's going to be twice as wide as the previous two. So we just continue on, what have we got next? We've got uh, 160 to 200, so 160 to 200, and the frequency density is 0.25, that one's on my scale already, 0.25 is here. Great. Final one, um, 200 to 300 is 0 0.1.